think today we're we're still look, consider we're still working on the um, some of the themes, the ideas that we started to look into in the on Thursday in the Torah fifty one of uh, Lakuti Maran, which is namely the um, the issue of truth and falsehood of Sheker. Um, and the importance of um, pointing oneself in the direction of truth. Uh, and um, so I want to consider that we're, we're still working on that issue, but um, we're going to bring in today some teachings from Itchamay or Morgenstern uh, but regarding the, this issue of Shekhar and Emmas, I think it's very important for us to, to fall back on the Buddhist way of, of talking about these things, to make a distinction between tr truth that is the true truth and truth that is relative truth. Um, and uh, for the most part, we can't um, fathom what the true truth is. So, but in a way, that's not ultimately that's not as much as a much importance as one might think, because the important thing is to go with your truth. Because when you go with your truth, whatever level you're on, it will it will take you in the direction of the next level that you could reach. And basically, that's all that we can do. So we're remember that the um, Hanukkah, we had the great teaching of the dreidel, which gives us the understanding that everything is moving, everything is changing, everything is spinning, and. Um, so the whole world, the whole cosmos is spinning and there's nothing that isn't part of it. But everything that pops up is on its own level. It's popping up on, on it could be what is on the top of its level, it could be on the bottom of its level, it could be somewhere in between. But everything that reaches even the highest level will turn out to be the lowest level of the madrega that's above it. So above can become below and below can become above precisely because everything is constantly being transformed in a process of, of uh, which could be called the aliyah or ascension. And that occurs even where it doesn't seem to be occurring. So the question is, um, how does one how does one attain a higher level than than one is presently on? If if we're working consciously, it means you're working with a uh, Fishov. Yeah, that's another good image. Um, And, the, and again, the important thing is not to think in terms of absolutes, because there, there's no, the, the only absolute that there really is, is totally indefinable. And, um, and it's, it's, it is so high that, that basically we, we, most of us could not conceive of it, because that level of realization, to the extent that it could be realized, that's what I would call the avataric level. Or to put it in our language, it's the messianic level. If we're talking about Mashiach, uh, the, for the most part, I'd like to think of Mashiach as a kind of uh, a, a evolved consciousness. Uh, and that a consciousness that uh, as a species, we can aspire to, to, to elevate um, the consciousness level of all sentience on the planet 
which is also elevating the consciousness of the planet itself to the extent that it is our, in our, within our, our control, within our uh, uh, capacity to contribute to that. So, but that's all, but that itself is relatively true because from the absolute, from the standpoint of the absolute truth, there's nothing to evolve. Absolute truth is, a, is just, is a, what, what uh, to use a contemporary term, it's a singularity. And there's, a, there's nothing that you can compare it to. So it's something that has nothing to, to uh, it has nothing that can be compared with it, is not something that can evolve or because evolution itself implies that something is, is more evolved than something else. And right? something we reach a higher level. And uh, so within relative truth, that's to say phenomenal experience, um, which is all that our minds know. We can have this aspiration. We can have a messianic aspiration. But within that aspiration, the, one of the um, truly amazing possibilities, and we talked about last time the uh, cataphatic uh, appearance of uh, say Elohud, of reality, of ultimate reality can appear in some form within the phenomenal even though that appearance is not the absolute truth itself, because the absolute truth itself is the apophatic, to remember those terms, that which has no, uh, this is just incomparable, mi kamocha, there's nothing, who, what could be compared uh, to you? Nothing. Mi domalach, who is comparable to you? Nothing is. So the, the ultimate reality is something, is incomparable, because it's a singularity, it's it's a it's a it is a, what Kant called the dingen sich, the thing in itself, the reality in itself. Nevertheless, the fantastic paradox is that that thing in itself, under certain conditions and certain points in time, when those times are right for it. It appears as a uh, the soul of the what we could call the Mido Melach. Uh, it it appears as um, what what Reb Nachman calls the Tzadikador, as the the where the Tzadikador is the presence. Of a nishama klali, it's also sometimes called a nishama klali. It's in it. It's the soul of all souls. It's the soul that all branches, all branches of existence are a part of. So it's it's the world tree. We see this in all kinds of mythologies. This is a world tree, and um, that tree has a certain root, and uh, so you see this like in Reb Nachman's Torah all the time. The, and a lot of people cannot relate to it um, because they don't realize that it is not it has nothing to do with personalities whatsoever. Uh, it's not, um, although uh, the other paradox is that that for some people uh, who are on a, have enough sensibility, who have a, a, a refined enough spiritual sensibility then you can feel the vibrations of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the world soul in the presence of a particular uh, tzaddik ador. Because that, that person, that's like, um, you know, the ultimate bhakti, the ultimate uh, state of devotion, the devotion you can feel, uh, and it's kind of like a magnetic center, like a magnet. You can feel drawn to uh, the, the vibrations of the presence of a soul that is 
encompassing all souls. So in Reb Nachman's line, which he, he's, he mentions in a few Torahs that there's one tzaddik in the world and all the other tzaddikim are receiving their Torah from that tzaddik. Now they may know that or they may not know that. Uh, the, the, the very, 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 very strangest thing, very, very, one of the very strangest things is that it's very often like the that Sadiq Adur would, would not be a person that would have a, a huge following. To give you like a fairly contemporary example, uh, to my limited lights, I would say that Sri Ramana Maharshi was probably the Sadiq Adur uh, when he was in this world. It was basically from the the to the first half of the 20th century. Um, at least that's the way it appears to me now, but if you would go to India in that time, you could find, um, uh, you could find gurus with huge followings, right? They would have, uh, and, and most of the gurus that have huge followings are, are, are often, they're like uh, wonder working. They're like the wonder working Rebbe's. The Rebbe's, you want to find the Rebbe's that have a lot of the Hasidim. The more they do miracles, the more uh, Hasidim they have. Now, but a person like um, a, a guru, like um, the world guru, like Ramana Maharshi, never does a miracle. Never, ever does any miracles. And yet, you know, people would ask him, uh, sometimes they want him to, to go somewhere, uh, travel around, go somewhere, start, create a big public following. They should get a lot of, a lot of uh, Hasidim. And what would Ramana say? He would say, where can I go? Where am I not already? He had nowhere to go because he was every, it's not actually that he was everywhere. It's, it's that everywhere was where he was. If you see the distinction, it's not, he, he's not everywhere. Everywhere is within him. And that's why he, he has nowhere to go because there's nowhere outside him. The, all the places are already in him. And so people, you know, Often, like um, the what happens with rabbis and gurus is that the Hasidim, their Hasidim, uh, get into a machloket. Which one is the greater? Was your rabbi greater? No, my rabbi is greater. Your, and the, the, you have a machloket. So, in the time of um, Sri Ramana, the other really great um, contender. Uh, for the Tzadik Ador was Sri Aurobindo. And um, Sri Aurobindo, was very involved in politics. Uh, he was quite heroic. I, I have a lot of admiration for him because he was very uh, involved in the founding of the state of India. And uh, the end, he was associated with the Congress party, all the leaders of the Gandhi and all these people um, had a relationship with Sri Aurobindo and he was very um, concerned about the transition from uh, the British empire to an independent India. And he was also very involved with um, turning his yoga in the direction of uh, actually using his powers to confront the, um, the intentions of uh, Hitler. Even to the extent that in his yeshiva, there were in India, a lot of people were supporting during the Second World War, they were supporting the, the Nazis not because they were Nazis, but because the Nazis were the enemies of the British. And they wanted the British out of India. So it was, a, it was the old story, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. 
And uh, so there, were, there was a lot of uh, sentiment in India that was anti-British, of course, uh, for good reason. And, um, but perhaps not for the best reasons. The, there was a tendency to want the Nazis to succeed, to defeat the British. And despite all of that popular uh, sentiment, uh, Sri Aurobindo used his yogic powers to stand in the way of the, uh, of the efforts of the Nazis and to ultimately defeat them. Now, why I tell that story is because what was Ramana Maharshi doing? Now, a lot of people would say, well, Ramana Maharshi wasn't doing anything. And um, indeed that was true, he wasn't doing anything. And nevertheless, when he was asked about that, he said, how do you know I'm not doing anything? <laughs> and I think the meaning really is, how do you know I'm not doing anything? Because you, you think he's not doing anything if you don't feel the energy that uh, is present in the entire cosmos because of his presence in the world at a certain time. He doesn't really have to do anything because he already is everything. So I'll just make a little a distinction I'm saying between relative truth and absolute truth. A guru like Ramana Maharshi is not going to have a lot of um, chassidim because most people don't want absolute truth. Most people want relative truth. So, and Am I saying that's a bad thing? No, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because if you think you want, you, you should go to the, to, to directly to absolute truth, which is called the direct path, but your interest in the direct path, your interest in absolute truth is only intellectual. You won't get anywhere you have no, no possibility whatsoever as long as, you, uh, as long as your aspiration, your longing is only based on some idea. You can't really, you can hear about a great a madriga and think, wow, that sounds fantastic. But it doesn't mean you can get there. It doesn't mean you, it's, it's within your reach. And if it's, if it's not within your reach, you're not really doing a good avoda, trying to attain somebody else's level. So the point is that relative truth means relative truth to the, the level that a person is on. For example, I'm gonna give an example. What are the lowest levels? And this is really an important thing, I think. What are the lowest levels? <clears throat> the lowest levels are called the klipot. Right, we see in Kabbalah they talk about the klipot, and um, what are the klipot actually? Now, I don't mean what is the description in the Lorianic maps. That's one thing. I mean what is like halacha the masa. I mean, practically speaking, remember we have understood or tried to understand how the Ari was able to map the cosmos, he created a cosmology. And by, on the basis of that cosmology, we can have an idea of which way to go and what's possible, what all these levels are. But the danger with the maps is that the map is not the territory, right? Marshall McLuhan, the map is not the territory. I mean, it's so easy to forget that. You see the map if you, and you're, you're, you, you think because I know where something is on the map in relation to something else that I know, actually know that thing. But um, the lover dad is, is no, you don't know that. Uh, you don't, you, you know, what does it mean? Le, 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 le conozco, le, le conocer something can mean, like in Spanish, it means you've actually been there. So do, 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 I, do you know, um, I mean, if you ask me, do I know Mexico City in English, I'd say, yeah, I know Mexico City. 
but I couldn't say in 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 Spanish. I cannot say. Uh, Yo conozco uh, ciudad. The, I can't say I know Mexico City. So cannot not. I I don't con conozco. I might have some knowledge of it, but it's only in my. It's only an idea. Unless you've actually been there, you don't know it. So there's a certain, and that's the way the 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 the, the spiritual path works. So the danger of the map is you can think you know what these levels are, but you don't know these levels if you're not on those levels. You see what I'm saying? So you have to ask yourself very ruthless, with ruthless honesty, what is the truth for me? So it's good to know, well, what are the possibilities? And what the lowest level is the, is the clipote. It's very important to not to exclude the clipote, but that's like if you don't have if you don't actually know the clipot, and that's to say conosco, it's like I've been in, the, I've been there, I've been there, I know what it is to be there. Um, then you're 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 denying the shadow. You you will not be able to really complete your tough key. You won't be able to to raise all the sparks that are particularly necessary for you to elevate unless you can recognize all the levels, you have to recognize the lowest level. That's why like in Reb Nachman's Torah, he represents in the, um, this, in the story, the story that uh, Zanya likes so much, but she was, I don't think she's here today, but uh, she's working on the story, which is called Masa, it's a story about a person who can't walk. Uh, and the issue of the person who can't walk means that in the Torah of Reb Nachman, it's important to have a level which is called the person who can't walk. Is it per and and that does and 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 again I'm not speaking absolutely I'm speaking relatively whatever level you're on, you have there's a there has to be a place on that level, which is a place where you can't walk, can't move, and so you just you are a a beginner you're in a beginner's mind on that level. You don't know how to how to navigate it yet. You don't know how to move through it. You can't. You haven't really even stood in there. Standing is in, in Hebrew. We have a term that's called maxik ma'amad. It means you can hold your you can hold your place, right? You can keep it together on that level. So the chiger cannot even stand. Uh, doesn't have enough strength even to stand. And that could be on a very high level. Could be on a very low level. So you have to have a sense of um, being on the lowest level of your level in order to get higher you have to you have to be able to to move up you move up by by uh aspiring to the level that is just above you and you, and you can stand up and you can reach higher in your level and you're starting to reach up to aspire to something higher but you never just rest, you don't want to stay, you never rest at any particular level. You're always trying to reach a little bit higher, but this is of course all within relative truth. Now the clipo are ba basically of two types. What are the two types? One type is called insanity and the other type is called ignorance. And there are different forms, but insanity is the basic, that's the lowest, that is the, um, the most basic, the lowest and most dangerous uh, level, uh, the level of insanity. And the level of insanity, now the model for insanity comes from, Yechezkel 1.4 from uh, 
first chapter of Ezekiel, the fourth verse, um, which I just have right here. Uh, and there it says, Ve'ere v'hine ruach sara. I took a look, I looked in my prophetic state of vision and, um, and I saw ruach sara, I saw the stormy wind. Um, the stormy winds are uh, that's uh, so the one form of, of the insanity is um, what's the word for that head for is uh, agitation the stormy wind it's ag and it's an agitated state like a stormy wind that's part that's an insane state in an insane state you are likely to do harm either either to yourself and to others or to yourself and to others. That's why it's insane. This is com completely unhealthy. So there's agitation, ruach uh, sara, which which means it comes from the side of gavura, from din. And the reason is because the basis of insanity is, is victim consciousness. It's the idea that I'm a victim. I'm suffering. I'm, every, the world is a completely, um, is my enemy. And so I, I'm the victim of the world. All the judgment is falling on me. That's a very dangerous place. So anything that comes from this klipa that is motivated and driven uh, by that, by insanity, from victim consciousness, from the sense of being a victim, is, this is a, just crazy. That's ultimate insanity. And how much of the world today is stuck in the klipa of insanity? And that this, the energy of that insanity is being, um, and this is, this is the very important thing is that the Baal Shem Tov said, and others, of course, wherever you put your mind, whatever you allow your mind to dwell on, there you are. So the more insane you are, the more your mind is filled with insanity, the more insane you will be you're filling your mind with insanity, you're creating insanity. But because you're insane, you don't know that you're making yourself insane. Right? So that's, you have Ruach Sarah, it comes from the, from the sense of being uh, the victim of judgment. The world is, 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 the world is all against me. Everybody hates the fill in the black. Everybody hates me. Everybody hates the you know who's. That's an example of victim consciousness. And if you make your actions based on that victim consciousness, you are going to create more insanity, both for yourself and for others. The second is called Anand Gadol, the great cloud. The great cloud what is the great cloud? The great cloud is ignorance. What is ignorance? Ignorance is, is, is the thinking that I am something, is, is everything that is associated with um, an independent ego. The great cloud. Missing, I, 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 I am the only thing that matters. I'm, I'm not able to, uh, to recognize um, the importance of anything else and let alone anything higher, but it's like complete ignorance um, is part of insanity, but maybe not as bad as the Ruach Sara. But still, a kind, this kind of, um, yeah, insanity, ruach, sorrow, agitation. Uh, and then the, the 
So the Ananga dole is, is like a dole, complete dullness and in a bit fit numbness, great cloud. Agitation is disturbance. So the Ruach Sara is disturbance, lack of balance. Ananga dole is confusion. Dullness. Eshmit Lakacha. The third one, is called Eshmit Lakacha. It's the fire, it, it, it's like the self uh, producing flashing fire. And that's uh, furious anger, fury and anger. So agitation is disturbance, unbalance, but the insanity can take a form of uh, conflagration, it can burn up. Burn. It can burn up as, and uh, now all of this stuff, is present in every person. So don't, don't draw from this the lesson that, oh, I know somebody like that, I know somebody like that. It's, never mind if you, I mean, it's, unfortunately, we do know some, all kinds of people like that, but that's not really our business. Our business, I know somebody like that. That's, that's the important thing. I know somebody like that, me. Um, and then the question is, um, how do you know? How do you know that you that that? How do you know that? So you have to have a certain uh, a certain awareness, and that aware even while you're in the klipo, and that awareness is that's the fourth klipo, which is called noga. The klipo it's called the shining, uh, as is the mitlakachet v'noga lo saviv and. Around all of these klipot, there is kind of a shining light. And that is the shining light of awareness. So that even though the klipot, you're in the klipot means that's what's manifesting in your mind and body in, a, in some situation. Um, now, if you're completely insane, um, you won't be able, you, you will need somebody else to help you out of it. You won't be able to get out of that. That's why the first level, if you look in that story, the third story in the Likuti, in the Sipur uh, Masyot about the Hige, or the, one, the person who can't walk, initially they're completely dependent, they have to be taken care of. They can't do masa matan. They can't do any business for themselves. They have to be provided for. So you have to receive your sipuk, your supply of uplifting energy it has to come from the uh, generosity of others who are looking out for you. You have to look out for a person. So if we're talking about somebody else who has doesn't have the klipat nova, but I'm assuming that for us, if you can understand anything that I'm saying, this teaching, then you understand the fourth klipa. The klipa noga means that even when a person is, is still in choshech, is in darkness, is in what's called the sitra acha, is not really um, connected directly to the... Uh, the light to the energy that that a person can use to elevate themselves, and they're still in that in need for some kind of uh, intervention. But if you have awareness of uh, the arising of the klipa, if you have noga, you can shine the light of noga on that klipa. But it's still part of the klipa. So that's and what it. But when you, if you shine the light of noga, if you have the presence of the, of the, the neutralizing klipa, 
It's the, the light of awareness neutralizes the power of the klipa, which otherwise makes you insane or keeps you insane. The, 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 the noga, the shining light, is that you can neutralize that power of the power of the insanity that is manifesting. But in order to do that, means you have to look at it with the light of Noga. You have to look at it with the clear, with a clear light, and and you you want to see um, you want to see um, with that in that light. Where this, where the other, where the uh, the klipo, they're called the impure klipo. The 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 other three, where are they coming from? Like how did this get here? <laughs> and that may mean something like usually you have to you you have to recognize um, that the the seeds for these klipo uh, were planted either in this lifetime in your childhood or in in the in the uh, uh, growing up stage so the, the coping mechanisms uh, that uh, that a uh, an immature being so they're they're all this is why in Kasidut they're all called uh, katnut they're all called um, small mind immature mind it's the immature mind uh, develops uh, these childish uh, coping mechanisms which um, might be uh, normal for a, for a two-year-old but are but for an adult are completely insane right just completely insane uh, but so the light of Noga can shed light on the energy and presence of these clipo and when it sheds light on them, it can it can undermine it can it can elevate the potential sparks that are there. It can it can transform that energy, neutralize the the situation. It can raise a person to the next level. And what is the level that a person can reach from insanity? It is the level of true ignorance. The level of true ignorance is the level of um, I'm not a victim just that the world isn't a fair place. I mean, I, it, it, it's everything isn't about me that I'm that I'm the that it's all about victimizing me. It's just that the world isn't a fair place. You win some, you lose some. So that's actually a lot better than being completely insane, but it's still very ignorant, right? It's a very ignorant level. But it's possible to, um, in when the when the worldview is changed from the world of I'm the victim, I'm here just to be a victim because everything is evil, uh, has changed to everything is unfair, and I'm here in an unfair world. Then you can. Uh, you can start having some hope that maybe you'll uh, there's a way that you can avoid uh, evil and you can uh, you can aspire and benefit from what appears to you to be desirable and good. Now, from that level, which is a level of complete ignorance, it's a complete ignorance because the, it it it. What it, what it sees of the world, its sense of what what it thinks it is, what I think I am when I'm in that place, and what I think the world is, is, is just the complete delusion. It's not at all what I am, and it's not at all what the world is, but it's better to be in, a, in, in that delusion than to be in the, an insane delusion, because I'm not likely to do as much harm to myself or to somebody else even though um, I'm, I'm, in, I'm really in a very confused and ignorant state. But the aspiration that maybe there is some good in the world, even if it's not so much, uh, can lead me to the first level of ascent. 
Now all these levels are, the levels of the Klippot, these are all levels of Malchut, and Malchut in exile. Malchut is the I, is when the I is um, either insane or ignorant. It's ignorant, doesn't know what it really is and doesn't know what the world really is. And it's either um, tormented by the world or it's just confused by the world and doesn't know what, to, what really to do. It doesn't know what is really right or what is really wrong. But at least if it's on the level of ignorance, it can have some aspirations. And at a certain point, if it keeps aspiring, it can come to the first level of ascent, which is the first level of connecting Malchut with um, Netzachod and Yesod. It's a connection, you can start connecting up, it can get Malchut, start getting Malchut out of uh, exile by reaching for some powers. It's reaching for powers. Those powers are Netzachod and Yesod. Now, what is it like to be on that level? That is the level where the world seems to be a collection of rules and laws. It works a certain way. It's not just a, it's not just an unfair world. It's a world where that works a certain way. And if a person can learn how it works, they can become powerful. And what is that called? Now, what is the, the gurus that teaching on that level? What are they teaching? They're teaching my, that your mind creates its own reality. In other words, if I, if, if, if I um, understand how the world works, then I can control my mind. Uh, and by controlling my mind, I can get what I want. I have, I'm, I'm after power. I want to know what these rules, I want to know all these things so I can have more power and, and create the reality that I would like, um, like uh, to exist. And that is a higher, much higher state. So it was, was the teaching that um, uh, my mind is creating my experience. My mind is creating my world. And that's actually uh, a level that's pretty common uh, and it's better. It's a high, it's a better place to be than uh, in total insanity. Uh, and it's a better place to be than total ignorance because in total ignorance you're just kind of taking your chances. Now you can evolve to this level of uh, recognizing the creative power of your mind. You have some bechira. You can make choices. There's you can believe in karma. Like if I do this, I'll get that. If I think this way, I'll get that. This is going to be better for me and so forth. That's a big step up, right? That's really, a lot of people think that's where it's really at. And, um, and it, it's very helpful for a lot of people. It's better than uh, being insane. And yet it's quite an ignorant level. It's quite an ignorant level, really. It's quite an ignorant level. And um, so, but a person on that level can aspire to a higher level. If they're on the path and they're, 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 the way to go is always you want to get to a higher level than this. And you could stay at that level for a long time, especially if it's working for you. But what happens when you have acquired all these powers and you're still not happy, you're still not satisfied? you still feel something is missing. What happens is you become um, aware that there is a source that your mind is receiving its inspirations from a higher source. 
So your mind really isn't creating. So if you go to that next level up and you realize your mind isn't really creating anything, your mind is being guided to create certain things by some higher power, which is guiding you. You get that? It's the level, then you're, you're up. Uh, this is where you get to the level of uh, Chesed, Gevor, and Tiferet. As you have the sense you're on the heart level. Your center becomes Tiferet. When, you, when your level is my mind is creating everything, you've got power, that's the Yisod level on the way up. But you can move from there, from Yisod, you can move up to Tiferet. You aspire to the Tiferet because at some point you realize that, yeah, I may have a lot of powers here, but I don't have all the powers I need. And not only that, but I'm not really generating my own powers. I'm receiving these powers from something above me. And as soon as you realize you're receiving the powers from something above you, you, are, you have some relationship. That's where your heart opens up. Why your heart opens up? Because because you'll fall in love with the higher power, with the source of the higher of your powers. It's like where I'm receiving my powers from, that's the greatest thing in the world, right? That's the greatest thing in the world. So I want to love and serve that being because since everything is coming from this higher power, maybe I'll get more from it if uh, through loving it enough, right? That's a, that's a very... Um, so you can think that that and a lot of people are teaching that. That's like um, you get to the place. There was a that's a, the Tiferet level, and really even um, I think that was really where Reb Zalman's teaching was very much centered on the Tiferet level. And I once had a conversation with the Sheikh uh, Dina Densmore. And uh, we were talking about Reb Zalman, of course, and uh, she said, uh, well, Reb, Zalman's, Reb Zalman believed that what was really necessary was to just connect everybody to God, and that would take care of it. But there's so many ways you could be connected to God, right? So there, that itself is, there's a madrega of, the connect, of being connected to God, that's being connected to the Tiferet level, the Tiferet level as well. There's, there's a higher power and uh, I should love and worship it. And, uh, but then you get into the question arises, for what purpose are you loving and worshiping it? And as long as you're loving and worshiping it because you wanna receive more from it, you will be stuck on that level. You won't be able to move higher. And even though that's a much higher level than the levels uh, below it, it's a pretty ignorant level. It's still a pretty ignorant level, basically. It's uh, now keep in mind all these levels are levels of ignorance. The only question is how much of the ignorance has been peeled off. So you get to the level, the level of the uh, the maminim or the muma, mumin, the ones at the levels of the believer is, is, is there's a lot of grace and blessing on that level, but it's still, a, it's a level of, uh, of considerable delusion. And the principal delusion is that you still believe that you're something that there is something other than the reality itself. If you're dependent on this higher reality and dependent on this higher self, whatever you want to call it, you could call it God or call it whatever you want, I'm dependent on this thing. That's a very blessed level. Just a very, a lot of wonderful uh, blessings and benefits. Uh, become available when a person reaches that level because there is a certain there is something wonderful about finding God but finding God implies that 
there there are some that 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 reality ultimate reality is one thing and you are something else and that it's something that needs to be found something that can be found something that is not present and maybe you can find it sometimes and maybe you can't find it sometimes because it's something that you need to long for and you have to make this great effort to find it and that effort brings you closer and closer. But the more that one actually can move towards that, can move themselves towards that higher, what seems to be higher, the more the distance between the lover and the beloved becomes diminished, closer and closer. The more asymptotically the, 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 the lover is approaching the beloved. And as that occurs, it becomes possible to ascend to a level that's even higher. And that is the, the level of illumination. Which is basically the Bina level. So you can jump up from the heart to the level of understanding. And what is the level of understanding? The level of understanding is that I am the everything that is pouring through me. I am not other than that everything that is pouring through me. This is very different than the level, say, of um, the magical mind level that I'm creating everything. It's not I'm creating everything. It's not that there is a higher power and that I'm dependent on it and worshiping it, but I am the expression of that higher power. It's all coming through me. I'm, I'm the gate through which it all comes. I'm the opening. I'm the space into which everything is pouring. And it's called illumination because at this level, there's a certain perfection. There's a certain, you, you, as opposed to the Klippa level, the Klippa level either is everything is absolutely terrible and I'm, a, I'm its victim, or everything is indifferent and not just. Everything is indifferent and unfair. When the level of understanding is everything is really just, it's tzedek u mishpat. It's all the way it should be. And there's a certain tremendous, um, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous benefit when to reach that level, the tremendous blessing because you're no longer suffering. There's, you're no longer something that is a victim or something that is lost in confusion. You see, see, the, see what I'm saying? That's illumination. You become um, the space, but you become the space in which, into which every blessing flows, through which every blessing flows. And you're not really wanting anything you're not lacking anything there. You feel everything is perfect. Everything is right. Now, is that the highest level? No, that is delusion. That's another delusion. It's delusional. It's a wonderful place to be, though. It's a place of such uh, incredible um, satisfaction. Right, of feeling like, wow, it is all really wonderful. It's all terrific. It's all the way it should be always. And I am it. I am this perfection. There's nothing else but this perfection. And you could stay at that level for quite a while. Except at a certain point, you may recognize 
that is surrounding this illumination is something like a darkness. That the illumination comes from something that has no form it's not even shining it's not shining as any as as all these wonderful things there's something beyond that something beyond that and that that is called choshech it's called darkness but it's not the darkness of ignorance it's not the darkness of the klipot it's the darkness which says uh, i make darkness my resting place it's my the darkness is my secret And that's the Hachma level. That's the wisdom level. The wisdom level is, I am not. The illumination level is, I am. I am this. You know, that was a funny thing. One of the great, great ironies of our time is that uh, Nisa Gadada Maharaj, who was, one of, who was like a, the Ramana, Ramana Maharshi level um, presence of ultimate reality within the phenomenal uh, had uh, a book published at a certain point, which was uh, translations of talks that he gave the, uh, by Maurice Friedman. And Maurice Friedman was also a very extremely uh it was a recognized by Nisa Gadada himself as a gyani one of two, only two or three gyanis that he ever actually met i say gyanis i mean those of the, have re, who, who had attained the highest level so i shouldn't think there's many of these people around so that that's the the the, the intellectual sense oh i understand what a gyani is doesn't mean you're a gyani because you under, you can have a definition of it doesn't mean you're a gyani at all you don't know anything as your level, you may be just uh, oscillating between the clipode and uh, magic mind. Maybe you're oscillating between magic mind and 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 the love and the heart's love for the higher power. Maybe you're oscillating between the heart's love and the higher power. And I am this. Who knows? But. So Nisa Gadada Maharaj, when they put out Murray, the book uh, by Maurice Friedman, they called it I Am That. And that's, uh, which is like a great, it's called a Mahavakya and the Hindus called it. So like a great saying that it is, it's a key to the nature of reality, I am that. But the problem is, I am that is not the highest teaching. And it's, I am not that is a higher teaching than I am that. And what is I am not that? Because I am that is the Bina, that's the understanding level. But beyond the understanding level with the illumination of seeing everything is perfect, is seeing nothing. There is a darkness present before that illumination before the uh conscious the illuminated consciousness manifests there is its non-existence which is not nothing this is this is not nothing this is not the uh nihilistic uh i hear some sometimes these people it kind of drives me crazy in a way i mean it's so incredibly stupid that think they have realized by believing there is nothing, they think they've realized the truth. But that's just pure ignorance. Obviously pure ignorance. So this no, this darkness, I made darkness my secret resting place. This is a darkness. You know who was the great uh, devotee of this darkness? Uh, Rabbi Fern Feldman. She used to always teach about the darkness. And um, I don't think any of us really got, got what the darkness was at that time because it is so incredibly deep and everybody wants the light. 
So everybody, you, you, everybody wants to think, well, if I get to the level of illumination, then I, I have reached ultimate truth. I've reached reality. But in fact, that isn't reality. That's just a certain level of, uh, of relative truth. And beyond that is a level that's even higher. And what is that's the level of non-existence. That I'm not even all of these things that I think that I think I am. I'm not the the all that appears as perfect. I am the no thingness from which that all this perfect appears. So then you could get to the Hachma level, which is the level it's called Bitobim Tziyud, means I don't, I don't exist at all. There's no I existing. That is called the no self level. Is that the highest level? That's a pretty high level, but no, that is not the highest level. <laughs> so, but how do you get, what is beyond that level? That's the, the beyond that level, as Diane Pally is holding up a, a wonderful, uh, is Keter. Beyond that level is Keter. And, um, but, and here's really the chap that was in the, um, in the, in the uh, teaching on Vayechi from it, Itchemeyer Morgenstern, which I didn't even look at because his writing is too obscure for us. I think it's, I think it's more important for us to try to understand the import of what he's saying, which is basically this, that Well, let me give, let's go, let's switch over to Ichimeyer since we're, uh, we have, we, 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 we want to have, uh, we want to connect Torah to Torah. So let's just look at a little of Ichimeyer and try to wrap this up. So he's Ichimeyer on the Parsha of Vayichi. And the verse says, V'yikach Yosef et shnehem et Ephraim b'yemino b'yismol Yisrael v'yet menashe b'yismolo. Me mean Yisrael via Geshala. So Yosef, who was, well, we have to expose uh, Yisod, took the, the two, uh, the two, the two sons, the two offspring. Now, here's the point is that what are the two sons? The two sons are one is Ben Yosef and one is Ben David. So there, there are two forms of Mashiach. We talked about what we started this whole thing. We're talking about Mashiach consciousness. And Mashiach consciousness is the model for the evolution of the present world to move from one Shemitah to another Shemitah, to move from one epoch to another epoch. In my understanding of the Shemitah, I like to say that what the evolution we want is to go from the Shemitah of Gevura, of judgment, to the Shemitah of Rachami, to move to the level of, uh, of balance, of harmony, of integration, of the right brain and the left brain, which means reinstalling the power of chesed to balance gavur and judgment. So we shouldn't be in a world that creates, because of its level of evolution, the propensity for so much insanity and ignorance. That is what we have. That's the product of, uh, of too excess of judgment. As we saw that these klipot, they come from the, the agitation that comes from the north. It comes from the excess of gavura. 
judgment and judging. One of the things that goes when you make the shift to Rachamim, part, one of the things that comes, you make the shift into the place, it, it's a higher degree of Amuna, which is not insane and it's not ignorant because it understands that everything is evolving and is not static. We're not stuck on this level of Gevura. We're not stuck on the level where that generates uh, so much victim consciousness and so much ignorance that basically everybody is insane. When the shift to Rachamim comes, the more this move uh, can shift, this paradigm shift can occur into the balance of Rachamim, the more there's the recognition that everything is evolving and everything in it is evolving and nothing is really stuck at whatever level of manifestation it presents at any particular time. And when one sees that, what happens? There's a tremendous um, outflow of compassion, understanding, and forgiveness, which, which takes the place. How long is seven years? Seven years is the time that it takes to activate all the seven levels that we've been discussing today. So that they're all, uh, they're, they're all represented, that you have a uh, uh, critical mass represented at each possible level. Yamim, years, or, uh, and Svirot, same thing, seven levels. So you have to have a shir koma, means a whole structure. And the whole, and that's Jacob's ladder. So Jacob's ladder becomes like this. It, it, it's the angels are coming down and angels are going up. It comes up and down, up and down. Now, in order to have that motion, uh, which the, of the, the energy that changes the paradigm, that moves the paradigm in, it, from Gavura into Rachamim, you have to have two modes of Mashiachiyu. One mode is called Ephraim, and the other mode is called uh, Menashe. So you have the, the, and what is the difference between them? What are the two modes? You have to have, you have to have a Mashiach on Ma, in in Malchut. That's Mashiach Ben David because David is the sphere of Malchut. It's it's the it is the what does it mean a the Mashiach? What is Mashiach Ben David? It is the I consciousness, which is connected. Mashiach ben David is, uh, is Minasha. And Ephraim is the Hokma level. So you have to have the, the iron, you have to have iron and Ani integrated. There's, there's a Mashiach on, which, which uh, is the, a pole which is, uh, represents the consciousness of I am not. And you have Mashiach ben David, which is the consciousness I am. But to have, for them, for, the, for those to, to create uh, the vibratory field, the field of reality that vibrates on the level of Mashiach consciousness that shifts the, the uh, Shemitot, it shifts the paradigm, the two have to be one. The I am and the I am not have to be integrated. And in that integration, I am and I am not, that's the Keter level. So in other words, the, what's beyond I am not, I am and I am not. I am and I am not. I am and I am not. That's, that is as, that's the deepest truth that can be manifested. That's the deepest world of truth. I am and I am not. And what is that? That is being here. 
this is the, the, the hop of all hops. I am and I am not is, that, is actually being here. That's, that's what it is to be here. I am here. I am not anything that I think I am. Yet I am here. You see how, how that's how pure that is, how, how simple it is. It's the simplest. It is simply being as you are. Because that is as you are. And that's what we have to prove to yourself. You have to, you have to, that's what we have to find out for ourselves. And to find it out, you may have to go through all these levels, but and at every one of the levels, and and again, I have to, you know, it's so important to, to understand that the great paradox is that we can all come to the understanding of this cutter. And the great paradox is that is the way it is right now. That's actually the way it is. It is and it isn't. And yet, for each of us to get to where we already are, we're gonna to have to deal with where we find ourselves from moment to moment. And as long as you have not illuminated through the power of the Klipa Noga, the neutralizing Klipa, if you haven't illuminated, if you haven't basically pulverized all of the tendencies to, uh, for insanity and ignorance to manifest in your mind and body, those clipo will be in the way of realizing the simple truth. So that's, that's the story. Now, what's the punchline is the punchline is you look at Vayechi, this Parsha, and, you, and it's an incredible thing because um, it seems like there's a machloket between uh, Yaakov Avinu. I mean, one might be tempted. Some people think Yaakov Avinu became senile, right? Uh, Yosef has got his head together. He comes, he's got a uh, Ephraim on, the, on his, right, his right side and Menashe on his left side because he wants uh, Yaakov Avinu to put the left, the lesser blessing on uh, Ephraim and the greater blessing on Menashe. And but Yaakov Avinu outsechels him, right? The Torah says, "Sikel et yadav." He he uh, et yadav. He sechled his hands. His hands had sechel. And because his hands had sechel, he put the right, his right hand on the one that was on the left and his left hand on the one that was the right. And the reason is because Yosef Avinu's point of view, and, and Yosef Avinu is looking one direction because he's looking with the eyes of Mashiach ben David. And so he wants to empower the I am. The I am is Menashe, is the Vav. And Yaakov Avinu is looking from the level of Mashiach ben Yosef, in the, which is actually the Mashiach. Mashiach ben Yosef is the Mashiach that is represented by Yehuda. It's Yudhe Vav with a Dalit. And that, that, that Mashiach. The Mashiach ben Yosef is looking from the Hachma level. So there's, a, there's the, the Mashiach of the Hachma level looks down from the place of Hachma, which is the place of Ayan, is looking down, and, and the Mashiach ben David is looking from the place of Ayan. And so they're, 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 they're in the, the two, they're in reverse and from each other's perspective. But the, the important thing is that the two of them are hooked up together. 
and that because in that connection between above and below so is precisely the energy that clarifies everything that makes everything real the way it is exactly the way it is so there's one last point the point that uh, uh, he makes that uh, Ichimeya makes is, is that Yaakov Avinu had something to teach Yosef, and this is really the hop of his whole of, a, of the whole his comment on this parsha, and uh, and the comment is this that the Mashiach and David energy, the energy of the I Am, wants to go first, and Yaakov Avinu had out sechels Yosef. He see he had more sechel than Yosef, and what was the sechel that he had? Is the iron has to go first? That means that if you want the ani to become the true ani, if you want the I am to become an I am who is not, then you have to get the is not. You have to realize the is not because it's the realizing of the I and of the is not that enables the I am to be, a, to be a real I am, to be an I am that knows that it is not. And that is the I am that we need for Mashiach to come. So on that note, I, I think, uh, Thank you for sticking around for this whole long tour here. And uh, I hope that uh, it meant as much to you as it meant to me to receive this tour and to hear it and to have the great honor to share it with you all. And I hope that uh, we'll all benefit, we'll all receive a bracha from hearing this. And uh, before we close, I wanna send some of the energy of this bracha to uh, to uh, Sharon Pearl again, who is recovering from COVID and getting their energy back and uh, hope it will be, uh, her recovery will be speedy and complete. Thank you, Esther, and blessings to you. And also wanna send some healing energy in the way of uh, Esther Warkow to relieve her of, uh, at least some, at least have a, enough good intention in all our minds and hearts that she'll feel some relief from her suffering. And may we all be relieved. May we all uh, have access to the light of the Klip of Noga to be able to um, pulverize with that light the manifestation of whatever insanity and ignorance uh, manifests in us to deal with. Okay, thank you, Sam. Thank you for coming. I haven't seen you in a long time. Thank you for being here. Hope to see you on Thursday. Thank you, Ray Miles. Yashikalach. Yashikalach. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>